ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When boys line up to run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you, once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Go power, you'll get it from Cheerios. Try it and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! Lone Ranger and Tonto, following the trail of an outlaw gang, drew rein and dismounted near the top of a hill in Kansas. The tracks of the outlaw's horses were clearly defined. Tonto, judging from these hoof marks, how many men do you think are with Harvey Clayton now? Mm, he say 20, maybe 22. Yes, that's what I estimate. Kima Tabe, we not fight that many. No, but if we trail them to a hideout, we can... That gunfire on the other side of the hill. Mount your horse. Easy, steady, big Easy, brother. Mount Silver. Mount The Lone Ranger and Tonto hurried to the top of the hill, where they halted at a stand of brushwood. Oh, oh. Through the brush, they saw Harvey Clayton and his gang near the foot of the slope, firing from behind a row of boulders, big enough to protect both the men and their horses. The outlaws were firing at a small detachment of United States cavalry that had been patrolling the valley. Troopers outnumbered. They need help. Get our horses out of sight. Backtrack a few yards. Back, boy. Back, back, back The masked man quickly saw that the troopers, caught with no protection on the floor of the open valley, had spread out, dismounted, and hugged the ground to fight as best they could. Did you said it would Leave the horses here. We'll fire down from the ridge of the crooks. Be savvy. Fire fast and try to make them think more than two men are behind their backs. Be ready. Keep down so you'll not be seen. Now, let them have it. The outlaws were fully exposed to the sudden, unexpected burst of gunfire from the top of the hill behind their backs. The Lone Ranger and Toto fired accurately, despite the distance. Several crooks were wounded. Others saw bullets that barely missed, knocked chips from the boulders. Clayton's shout rose above the bark of guns. The guns of the Lone Ranger and Tonto were soon empty, but the devastating fire accomplished its purpose. The outlaws spurred their horses along the base of the hill toward a bend, while the troopers maintained carbine fire until the last of the crooks was out of sight. While reloading their guns after the skirmish, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw a man in a captain's uniform right up the hill, and they stepped through the underbrush to meet him. Oh, they move, move. Oh, steady. Uh, uh, master, uh, can't say that I'm proud of the fact that I'm indebted to an outlaw gang. Captain, I'm not an outlaw, and I have no gang. Tonto's the only man with me. 
You mean to say that you two did all that firing? Yes, Captain. We each had two guns. Uh, I'm Captain Kincaid. From Fort Riley? Yes. Glad to know you, Captain. I came to thank you for your aid. You're welcome. Are you going to come back here with more men and ammunition to go after the outlaws? Sir, my plans are no concern of yours. The Clayton gang's of great concern to me. Todd and I have trailed those crooks for a long time. We hope to locate their hideout, then request aid from Fort Riley in capturing them. Indeed. I dare say it would be helpful to you if the cavalry eliminated a rival outlaw. I told you I'm not an outlaw. Who are you? People call me the Lone Ranger. That means nothing to me. It will mean something to the commandant at Fort Riley. Colonel Selby? Yes, and so will the name Harvey Clayton. The colonel's familiar with the activities of the Clayton gang. Colonel Selby will read my report as a matter of standard procedure. Chief Selby. Yes, Toto. Other soldier coming this way. Uphill. Lieutenant Clark, I told him to report to me as soon as possible. Captain Kincaid, will you please give Colonel Selby a message? What is the message? Please tell him that Toto and I will continue our pursuit of the Clayton gang. And we'll leave a trail that can be easily followed. I'll deliver your message if I have the opportunity. But Captain Kincaid, I... Excuse me. Steady, boy. Scott, a mess, man. Lieutenant, report on casualties. Yes, sir. Wounded men have been treated, and all five are able to ride as far as the fort. Has Private Brandon been found? No, sir. Did no one see him? Two of the men saw him, sir. As soon as the shooting started, instead of dismounting to return the fire, he rode away. <sighs> Cowardly deserter. Well, it's hard to believe Jim Brandon's a coward, sir. Of course he's a coward. Well, it was his first time under fire. That's no excuse. When he's found, he'll be court-martialed. Return to your detachment, Lieutenant, and form the column. We're going back to the fort. Yes, sir. Easy, boy. Get up, get up, there. Captain, is the deserter related to Major Brandon, who was killed by Indians a few years ago? The deserter is Major Brandon's son. Oh? Why did you ask? I knew Major Brandon. So did I. And it's a good thing he didn't live to see the day when his son would disgrace his good name. Steady there. Goodbye. Goodbye, Captain Kincaid. Get up there. Come on, get up. Otto, we get our horses. Ah. Captain, he plenty unfriendly. He still thinks I'm an outlaw, Toto, and he hates outlaws. And him hate coward. I've heard of Captain Kincaid. He's been in Fort Riley only a short time. <laughs> Steady, Silver. We're moving as soon as I tighten the cinch. I'd, I'd like to talk to Brandon. We follow tracks. Look for him? I'd like to, but we have a more important job. Oh, follow a Clayton gang. Yes, we'll stick to their trail. But from now on, we'll have to be more careful than ever to avoid an ambush. You ready? Uh-huh. Easy. Ready, big fellow. Me ready, Kim and Sally. Go on, Silver. Get him up. Go. From the scene of the skirmish, it was easy for the masked man and Tonto to follow the trail of the outlaws who, in fleeing for their lives, had made no effort to conceal their tracks. But darkness closed in to end the pursuit temporarily. The Lone Ranger and his Indian companion were in the saddle at daybreak. After about an hour, they saw that the tracks were increasingly hard to discern. Turn in, Toto. Who's in the No fellow. No fellow. Better blaze a trail from here on. Cut a section of bark off the trunk of this tree and point the outlaw's direction. From that point, the trail of the outlaws led into desolate rugged hills and through canyons floored with solid rock where only the faintest of scratches gave evidence that horses had recently walked there. The masked man and Toto were able to continue the pursuit only because of their ability to find marks that would be imperceptible to anyone with skill less highly developed. At short intervals and at each sign of the outlaws, the Lone Ranger used his knife to make big, clear scratches on the rocky ground. With marks like this to guide them... The troopers should be able to follow us with no loss of time. You plenty sure them come. I'm counting on them, Toto. All right, now let's find the next sign. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, sir. Come, scout. Come, fella. The canyon gradually narrowed until the high walls were less than 50 feet apart. At noon, when the two men neared a right-angle turn, 
The masked man raised a hand and said, Turn in, fellow. Who's no scout? No fellow. Oh. I'll see what's beyond the bend. We don't want to run into an ambush. Me look, Kimasabi? No, you stay here with the horses. I'll be right back. The Lone Ranger moved forward cautiously and disappeared around the bend. After several minutes, he rejoined Tonto and spoke in a voice of restrained excitement. Tonto, it's the end of the trail. Huh? You see outlaws, Kimasabi? No, but I saw a couple of their horses in a place that looks like a permanent hideout. This canyon has a dead end about a hundred yards beyond the bend. You mean it blind canyon? Yes. Outlaws, not wise, have hideout in place with only one way in and out. Maybe they are wise, Tonto. The walls are high and steep. They're well fortified. They have a barricade of rocks across the canyon at its open end, leaving only a narrow gap. The crooks are camped in the enclosure provided by the barricade and the walls of the canyon. Outlaw see you? I'm sure they didn't. I crossed behind a big boulder a short distance beyond the bend. Ah, Miss Harry. Leave the horses here and come with me. We'll take positions behind the boulder and watch the outlaws camp until the cavalry arrives. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating, oh, eating, and do, 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 and okay, okay. You bet we're eating our Wheaties out west, including the champs. Take Eddie Matthews, born in Texarkana, Texas, and a great slugger for the Milwaukee Braves. He got a Texas start and a Wheaties start. Been eating them for years. And there's Gene Littler from California, one of the best pro golfers in the game. Listen. How he socks them off the tee. You bet Gene's a Wheaties champ. Been eating them since he was seven. A He-Man breakfast for champs and gonna be champs. Why, there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and I'll be okay. to continue. About an hour later, Jim Brandon, the deserter, rode slowly along the canyon floor, following the trail the Lone Ranger had defined by scratches on rocks. Shading his eyes from the overhead sun, the young private saw Scout and Silver at ground hitch. Oh, 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 oh easy. He dismounted and spoke to his horse. I'll leave you here, fella. The crooks are probably near those horses, and they'll hear me if I ride any closer. Leaving the army horse, Jim Brandon drew his gun and advanced silently. He passed the white horse and the paint. Then, standing close to the canyon wall and peering around the bend, he saw the masked man and Indian seated on the ground close to the boulder. He stepped into full view, leveled his gun, and called... Hands up, both of you. Put him up, I'll shoot. Get down, you're in plain view of killers. I'm covering the only killers I see. Hey, what... You fool, you. The first shot from the outlaw's hideout distracted Jim's attention. For the split second the Lone Ranger needed to leap from the shelter of the rock and grip the soldier's gun. Let go, I'll kill you. We help you. I'll handle him, Toto. You return that gunfire. Keep those crooks behind the rock. He's heavy. The Lone Ranger fought to bring Jim behind the protecting boulder, while Jim, bewildered by the sudden developments, struggled to free his gun hand. Both were exposed to the gunfire of the outlaws, who were too distant for accuracy. But even at the distance, a bullet pierced the masked man's hat, and another grazed his shoulder. Finally, Jim's arm was twisted behind his back. He dropped the gun and cried, Get behind that rock before you're killed. All right, all right. Down, get down, sit on the ground. When Jim and the Lone Ranger were beside Toto, screened by the boulder, and out of the outlaw's view, the shooting stopped. Uh, thanks to you, those outlaws know we're here. Uh, I thought you and the Indian were members of the gang. No, Brandon, we're not outlaws. Well, how do you know my name? I knew your father, and you look just like him. You knew my dad. Who are you? He called me the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. He told me about you. You gave him a silver bullet. I'm wearing it right now on my watch, Bubba. I'm sorry I made a mistake and pulled a gun on you. You made a bigger mistake, Jim, when you deserted your comrades in battle. How do you know about that? Captain Kincaid told me after Tonto and I helped route the Clayton gang. Uh, I'm ashamed of that. But I couldn't help myself. When the shooting started, I could feel my heart pounding and my hands were shaking. And I knew I was afraid. I I'm a coward, that's what. I was scared when the gunfire started. Jim, fear is a normal emotion. The bravest of men know fear. My dad was called a fearless fighter. Your father knew fear many times. 
They went ahead in spite of it. I wish I had. And now it's too late. I can never go back to the army. That's why I set out to find the outlaws. Did you trail them? Yes. I went back to the scene of the fight and started from there. I wanted to find the crooks and shoot it out. I expected to be killed, but at least I'd redeem myself. Then I saw you two. I thought I might be able to capture you, take you to the fort. Did you have any trouble following the trail? No, it's clearly marked. Probably so other crooks can find the hideout. Todd and I made the clear marks, Jim. I told Captain Kincaid we'd make it easy for the soldiers to follow us to the hideout. You're not sure Kincaid come with soldiers. Why? Why wouldn't he come? Him not here, a lone ranger. Him think masked man, outlaw. He'll learn otherwise if he speaks to Colonel Selby, as I suggested. The colonel knows me. Well, what if Kincaid doesn't speak to the colonel? We'll have little chance of living until morning. Why? Jim, if you look around the edge of this boulder as Tano's been doing, you'll see there's only a narrow opening through which the crooks can leave their barricade. Well, I noticed that. We can keep them penned as long as we're able to see them. Them know it. That's why they'll not come out. After dark, they'll come out and close in on us. There'll be a fight, but it can't last long. Then Colonel Selby must be notified. Let's hope Kincaid speaks to him. Oh, but he won't. Kincaid's the most stubborn, opinionated man in the fort. Well, if we have to fight without help, we'll do our best. But you don't have to stay here. You can easily get away. Clayton and his outlaws know their hideout has been found, Jim. They'll move out the first opportunity. They'll probably commit many crimes before they're again trapped as they are now. How do now stick to our post and hope that help arrives in time? Then I'll go to the fort. I'll let Colonel Selby know you're here. When you be seen, you be arrested. Then you face court martial. That doesn't matter what happens to me. But if the lone ranger's killed, well, oh, that can't happen. I'm going. The crooks see you. He knows when you're around the bend. He's on the fire tunnel. Outlaws, stop shooting now. And hold your fire. Jim's out of sight around the bend. He's safe. The outlaws can't get him now. Him got plenty of nerve to go to port. Given the chance, Toto, he'll become a good soldier. Throughout the long afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Toto took turns peering past the side of the boulder to make sure the outlaws remained in the hideout. At sunset, one of the gang attempted to sneak on hands and knees through the opening in the barricade. The masked man fired. The bullet kicked up dust close to the outlaw. That drove him back. Him fool tried to sneak close to us now. I think he showed himself just to draw our fire. The crooks probably wanted to know if we're still here. After sunset, darkness gathered quickly in the canyon. Hope the troopers would arrive diminished with each passing moment. The Lone Ranger and Tonto waited grimly, determined to stay and fight as long as they were able. The high straight walls at the dead end of the canyon were bathed faintly in the glow of the outlaw's campfire. But the fire itself could not be seen because of the barricade. Suddenly, on the cliff high above the hideout, a ball of fire appeared against the night sky. Masabi, what's that in the sky? It's not in the sky. It's on the cliff. It dropping down. And there's another fireball. Meet these soldiers on cliff. They're dropping bundles of burning brush into the camp. That's right. The soldiers dropped the fire so they can see the outlaws. Those crooks aren't as smart as they thought. They didn't expect an attack from above. Then shoot down now. Clayton and his men wasted no time returning the gunfire from above. They leaped to their horses and broke from behind the barricade. They're coming, Toto. Open fire. Uh The Lone Ranger and Toto fired fast, doing their best to prevent the escape of the outlaws. Then troopers appeared behind the last man and Indian. It's Kincaid. Hard-riding men dashed around the canyon's bend and past the boulder where the Lone Ranger and Tottle crouched. Then on to meet the Clayton gang head on. It was a short fight with the outcome never in doubt. Captain Kincaid's men quickly overwhelmed the Clayton gang. Some of the outlaws were killed, many were wounded, and those who remained in the saddle threw down their arms and raised their hands. While the prisoners were being tied, Captain Kincaid approached the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who stood beside their horses. Well, sir, we meet again. Yes, Captain. Once more, I'm indebted to you. Well, that's hardly the case, Captain. Tonto and I are indebted to you. You and your men saved our lives. I stand by my statement. 
I owe you an explanation and an apology. But I... When Private Brandon returned to the fort voluntarily and told about you, I decided it might be wise to speak to Colonel Selby as you'd requested. I did so. Oh, I'm glad. We then questioned Brandon about the terrain, learned of the cliffs and the dead end of the canyon, and planned a strategy. The use of fireballs to drive the enemy from cover. It was very well planned, sir. Thank you. It was my own idea. Now, as for the apology... Forgive me for thinking you an outlaw. Well, that's all right, Captain. Oh, I, I'd like to ask one question. Yes? What's to be done about Private Brandon? Hmm. Well, desertion is a serious offense. However, a soldier who returns voluntarily may be considered merely absent without leave. That opens the way to punishment, punishing the offender with nothing more than a fine reprimand. Good. Then Brandon will have another chance to become a soldier like his father. You may be sure of it. Now, will you shake hands? Yes, indeed. Thank you. I trust we'll meet again. Until then, sir, good luck. Thanks, and adios, Captain. Adios. Easy, sir. Easy, 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 easy. Let's go, Toto. Montel! Let's go! Captain, Calamus Form, ready for the return with the prisoner. Lieutenant, I have just shaken hands... With a lone ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.